Okay, this video is about a three-way foot position integration, which honestly is pushing the limits of uh, speed development in my program when you take the entire posterior chain series that I've put together and integrate it into your training. And this was a lot of work in regards to, uh, not for the athletes, because as soon as you show them, then they usually do a pretty good job of integrating it. But there's a lot of work for you as a coach, but uh, this is... Uh, these programs that I have all this integrated into will be released in triphasic training too. So um, where we'll go here is uh, this three-way foot position is per your training focus. So what we're going to cover is the specific foot position angles for athletes that are training for speed in the weight room, a speed block or focus, which is about 10 to 15 percent uh, internal external. Um, the foot angle position in power, the external foot position should be 15 to 20. And in the strength position, it should be 15 to 25% um, for athletes. Now, if your strength coach knows something about you, or if you're a coach and you know something about your athlete and they squat a little better or differently, obviously, these are just guidelines for athletes in various positions. Now, I didn't mention internal rotation on power and strength. Internal rotation stays at 10 to 15 if you're doing a three-way foot series, okay? So, in, and I'll get into greater detail in this whole thing. So, the first one we're cover is the speed series. And when I'm saying speed in the weight room, I'm saying, I call it my triphasic training uh, zones one through four, which is roughly a load of 55 to 25 percent of your 1RM and or uh, body weight. Okay, and this is mainly for speed and peaking, but you can see how this process integrates. But the three-way foot position is for external rotation, you're at 10 to 15 degrees only. It's a small amount. It's actually not that much. This is actually too far. Um, the internal rotation during your exercise is, is again, 10 to 15 degrees. And the reason we went with 10 to, uh, 10 to 15 is usually in typical running, your foot uh, internally externally rotates 10 to 15 degrees at top end speed and running at uh, top end speed so this is why during your jumps um, and different exercises which I'll show a couple here um, and we integrate it with a lot of our exercises that you can see the combination of uh, how we internally externally rotate now this is all to be paired with and these are all videos of uh, the, the angular shake stance that I use um, so in speed it'd be a narrow stance right so when we do our speed training exercise let's say it's a glute ham you would have one set you'd have an external rotation of 10 degrees to 15 with a narrow stance a narrow stance because it's speed of internal rotation and then again obviously a neutral stance and we'd also integrate the foot shift um, which we'll talk about a little bit about at the end but it's how the entire foot won't hit the ground okay so that's the three-way integrated uh, for speed Here's an example of how you could do that. So once you do three sets of this exercise, you would do one set of this exercise with a slight external rotation, one set internal, one set neutral. But he's just doing the exercise. I'm just giving you that example right now. Um, here's a new favorite that I like, uh, this razor curl. And again, this razor curl is a, a banded. So when you get to the extended point, this is helping support your body weight so you can do a high velocity um, retraction back. You're actually uh, pulling yourself forward at a higher velocity. And there's a band here too. Um, you might go, you might wonder what's about to happen, but you'll see when the video happens. You see my uh, pretty advanced athletes do this. This is uh, it's violent and it's very impressive. Um, now, what I'm saying with the integrated foot series is that we are actually rotating 10 degrees. We'll do a set with internal rotation and we'll do a set neutral. Okay. Um, I do do an assessment on my athletes, and if we have a major problem, I'll actually hold them in a foot position if they're very weak. Um, I will not get to that. I'll probably do that in a part two series, but you can watch this video. watch it again you can see how he's exploding and he has an external rotation here but he's also integrating the angular shank model and the foot roll and the next video is for power and power basically same thing three-way foot position um the external rotation is is five to ten or 15 to 20 degrees in the power stance 
and this is obviously during the uh, row or uh, during the power phase okay and obviously with the angular shank stance it's a little wider stance than the speed phase and I'll cover that quickly but you should actually look at that video on my YouTube page in this series we also do an internal of still 50, 10 to 15 degrees okay because even in power at push off this is where your uh, foot will end up being at push off in the power stages of your running um, again the uh, foot performance shift uh, what you'll have is just a little bit less of the foot like connecting to the ground on exercise but uh, more of the foot will hit on the ground from the speed phase and if you want to learn more about my power phases basically it's triphasic training zones nine through five um, essentially this is what you're at is 80 to 55 percent on your power training zone so uh, I'll give you an example um, so this athlete's doing a power stance maybe even a little bit narrow for that but um, the uh, the lift here is a glute ham hyper and what transpires is she's pretty powerful you'll notice that right now actually she's off the glute ham she violently she has a, a small band helping her actually to do this exercise she would need it um, this was just actually filming surf uh, purposes you you notice uh, the effort in this won't be too great um, because she can do this without a band uh, she's been in she's done a number of triphasic cycles to say the least because why is that important because um, you got to make sure the tissue is strong so you can do something this violent okay here we go you can see how she's pulling up okay so what we're watching here is she's a little externally rotated for a three-way foot the next one she'll do neutral and the next one she do internally in a power phase and then she's also barely touching her foot uh, just the front side okay she's not coming all the way down because you don't have to now in the strength I'm bringing this to your attention because in the strength phase your athletes most likely will get loaded on their heel and we'll talk about the three-way foot position there but again you can watch this video she uh, yeah, you can see how um, fast she can retract her body weight so that being said so the three-way integration uh, for strength is it the external rotation is 15 to 25 degrees a little bit larger and then the internal stays at 15 okay most of the stance are wide stance like I just showed you a glute ham hyper we'd be her foot uh, the former athletes feet would actually be extremely wide and out to the side here during the strength phase okay so I will show you another lift after this is a reverse hyper how we adjust it but external rotation so one set would be externally rotated one set would be internally rotated one set would be neutral um, and we we kind of go with more let's say if it's a, a foot on the ground where the foot might start at uh, seven degrees and then rotate through to one o'clock but the weight is on the outside of the foot and rolls forward okay and these training zones that I would train strength in in the triphasic model and uh, is isometric eccentric above 80 percent basically now these all these zones I have uh, done some stuff with and uh, you're able to uh, when I say done some stuff I put stuff on the internet about the the specifics of these training zones so um, for learning purposes she would have um, somebody doing a glute ham hyper you would have the red position for strength for power and speed and now whatever phase you're in you would do a three-way foot for the reverse or the uh, the glute ham hyper here okay so for example you can see how he this uh, athlete has his uh, stance nice and wide he's starting with his uh, weight out he will roll throw to his big foot but even if he has a wide stance he will externally rotate his foot one set internally the other set and neutral in the same set uh, the next set I'm sorry now with the integrated foot roll let's say I actually have done some RPR testing flexive performance reset testing and I know that outside hamstring is extra weak which is actually tied to the posterior fibers of the glute med it's crazy every time um, people that might have a hamstring problem on the outside these anterior fibers are weak that works both ways they cause each other one can cause a problem because 
if the exterior fibers of the glute meat are off, then the stabilizer of the hip has to become this outside hamstring. And then this is also tied to the arch reset and the, in, the uh, anterior side of the, uh, the calf. Okay. So, um, just a little bit of extra education on the glute ham, but so you can have somebody do three sets of externally rotated. Okay. When I know there's a problem and I need to readdress the strength issue of that outside hamstring per se, but with the foot roll that we integrated foot roll for performance that we put in there on this post two chain series, even if you have an externally rotated foot all the time and you do the foot roll, it still rolls through all the hamstrings with the foot roll. That's the great thing about this. So it's not like you're not working the inside hamstring. As long as you foot roll, squeeze your big toe, which is the, uh, I think part six of this is the, the toe reflex involved in here. Then you can get the hamstring involvement all the time and the glute at the same time, which obviously this all ties together. So here's a reverse hyper example. So in the strength series, uh, the reverse hyper, we do single leg reverse hyper always. You're holding on with this arm because of the contralateral cross crawl concept on reverse hypers for athletes, uh, not for power lifters, but for athletes. And the spine is going towards the outside of this upper leg pad here because that's the angle you want for strength. Now, if I showed you, and you should have already seen this on the other uh, videos, but if I showed you a power phase, his upper body would be this way. The spine, instead of going right this way, would, would be more like this. And then he would be straight ahead for the speed phase. And But he is doing first set. You could do external rotated foot, neutral foot, internally rotated slightly 10, 15 degrees. And that's the zones that I have for this uh, reverse hyper model. So the integrated foot shift uh, a lot of times, and I put this here, you, you need to actually see the whole video because this isn't covering everything. I'm just telling you in the speed phase, right? You will integrate this, whether you're externally rotated, neutral, or internally rotated. A lot of time, the speed happens so fast that you will actually hit your foot right here and roll through the big toe. And then in the power phase, you will actually start more midfoot a little back a, a little farther back than because you're on the ground longer it's a power exercise so you'll start here and you'll roll through to the big toe and then on the strength exercise many times you'll start um even with weight on your heels you'll roll through on the outside of your foot and i have i have many directions for this on the um, integrated foot shift series on this uh, it's part 4.0. It's actually uh, integrated performance foot shift series right there. It is So this is just something to look at and when you tie all these things together, you're getting maximized speed Now if you hadn't seen the video before this is stuff at the end But the strength when you run your stance is wider in the in the beginning of, of your uh, five to ten meters which is has a high correlation with strength I mentioned in many of videos if I need to improve the five-yard dash and I've tested more than anybody I've ever known. A wide stance, you're, you need more strength and isometric strength. And doing like a reverse hyper and glute ham hyper in a wide stance is more optimal to fix that five yard dash faster. The 10 to uh, 15 is the power phase. You get a little more narrow stance. And then the 10 to 20 yard, and this is just most athletes, a lot of athletes, um, a lot of them don't even hit top end speed, but your more narrow stance as we've already talked about. So the one major tool that I would recommend I didn't put in this video is my 10 and 20 tool to analyze whether an athlete needs to go. So what you're doing is you're analyzing all these things to see what training model you need to put your athlete in specifically for that athlete. Um, remember, uh, and this is just some parameters. The speed um, block is, again, 50 to 25%, mainly top end speed. Acceleration and power, uh, 80 to 55%. And then above 80 would be the start. And that 10-20 uh, that tool that I'm talking about is, is a, uh, uh, a very effective tool for a coach to basically assess their athlete and tell me, what they need and i i basically did a uh, quick search and on my website right here um the 1020 tool link you can click on it but it's on my xo athlete so i would search 1020 tool performance made simple and basically it'll take you and tell you basically how to uh, assess your athletes and do 
that particular uh, type of method of assessing them, figuring out what they need for the next two to three weeks. You basically put their 10 yard dash and their 20 yard dash, their weights and pounds, and it'll tell you whether they need speed, strength, or power. Okay, uh, hope you enjoyed the video today.